If you do that, you're going to get beaten a lot because when you're constantly checking and calling, you're signaling that you don't have a strong hand. And what I like to do is tend to, you know, if I check or call, there's a good chance that, uh, yeah, I might be wanting to see the flop, but there's also a good chance I might have a really strong hand and I'm underplaying it and I'm, I'm setting you up for a trap. Now this is interesting. So six, seven, eight, nine. I'm missing the eight. We hit the eight on the river, just for sticking around and going out through the draw. Nobody's betting anything. I'm just going to hang out and see what happens. Now, uh, as it turns out, the eight didn't fall. So I'm out of here. You know, as soon as it, I'm not going to try to bluff anybody. I don't. No way I'm going to stay in this hand. So I'm done. We're out of there. And I'm still pretty much where I started at 1,500 chips. Look at this now. You know, I'm getting some decent starting hands here. Ace Jack offsuit again, you know, late position, one off the dealer in the cutoff. So I've got 270 in the pot. Uh, it's going to be 120 to call. So I'm going to be getting, you know, reasonably decent pot odds. So I, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and stay in this hand here and see what happens. So as it turns out, I flopped an ace and I've got a good kicker, which I like. You know, I don't like playing just ace crap, ace trash very often because it'll really get you in trouble, you know, from a kicker perspective. And you get out kicked and you end up in trouble. Now I'm going to raise this up. I'm going to make it painful enough to stay in with me that I can just walk off with this pot or make some more money on it. And in this case, I chased them out and that's good. They didn't have an opportunity to draw any crap on me and, uh, you know, hit me, knock me out on the river or whatever. So I hate it when that happens. Queen King, not a bad starting hand. I'm just going to go ahead and go with the flow here, though. No telling what would happen with, with King Queen offsuits. That's um, you know, a little bit marginal. I'm in middle position. It's a little marginal. But look, I flopped the King pair, and that's, that's great. It's top pair. And what I don't want is somebody sitting there with an ace, because one of those guys probably has an ace, and we need to be thinking about what they have. I'm going to raise it up again. Once again, I don't want people drawing out on me. You know, they're just sitting there waiting for an ace to flop, for example. So let's see what, what we think is going on here. So he folds. There's a potential flush on the board. He doesn't know if I've got it. I don't have it at this point, but I do have a shot at it with the queen of hearts. goes all in. You know, at this point... I've got him out kicked. Like I said earlier, be really careful with your kickers. Uh, that's why I like playing these group one and group two hands early in the tournament. Those kickers will get you in big trouble. I'm just going to fold this 8-6 uh, offsuit. It's not something that I would typically play. When I get a hand like that, I might, in, in late position, like on the dealer button, I might play a, a hand like that occasionally just to mix things up. But you know, be very, very occasional. I'd much rather have a suited connector, that sort of play. We've got one player out that I took out, and then uh, now I've got a really good starting hand here, ace-king. So what do you suppose I'm going to do? I'm Early on, I'm going to go ahead and try to drive everybody out, raise it up a little bit, and if anybody stays in with me, the chances are they have a, a pretty decent hand. So he's he's calling, he's got saying, I've got a, a decent enough hand to stay in with you. What we're going to see here is that um, we've got a good raise. Now, that's signaling a really strong hand when you got a, a, a re-raise like that, a big raise. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and call. I've got him out chipped, you know, by far, and uh, got a flush draw. There could be a straight out there, so let's see what he does. You know, I, I've got a shot at the, the ace-high nut flush. I'm going to go ahead and call it. It's, it's a really questionable call, and he did have the, the aces the pocket aces and fortunately for me you know in this case I drew him I drew out on him and got the the nut flush I still would have had 1650 chips left if, if I hadn't made that flush draw so you gotta take a few chances and if you've got the chips to do it that's the kind of time you want to take a chance and see if you can get out ahead if not you're gonna be right back kind of at 1650 about where you started yeah I wouldn't make that call all the time but uh, in this case it worked out for me In this next section, we're going to talk about the X-Factor system. And this is a system for adjusting your play based upon your stack size and the blinds and, and the stage of the game that you're in. So the X-Factor system is something that I created as a simple sit-and-go system that beginners and intermediate players can use 
sort of as guide rails almost, if you will, that will keep you in the right area, the way you're managing your money, the way that you're playing, and uh, enable you, as you'll see, to make better decisions that will more reliably and consistently get you into the money and into that heads-up position so that you can uh, can go for it uh, at, the, at the end of the game. It's based on your chip position and the blinds. Now, I didn't completely invent all of this, so what I want to do here is just say that it's been very common for people to look at their stack-to-pot ratio. And what we mean by that is your, your current stack size divided by the size of the pot at the beginning of each hand. So once the blinds and any antes, if any, uh, are in the pot, we calculate our stack to pot ratio and I call this the X factor and and we'll see in a minute why it's called the X factor but when we have this X factor in mind and we calculate it we can adjust our play according to some guidelines that I'll give you here in just a moment so how do we calculate the X factor well we start off by looking at our current stack size and, and this is these are not exact amounts we we estimate our current stack size which you should always be keeping track of anyway and then we look at how much money is going into the pot. Now this is easy to do online because it is displayed for you. You know, if you're in a, in a home game or a regular tournament, you need to be keeping track of that by watching what's in the middle in the pot when at all times. But uh, especially when you first start, so that we'll call that the initial pot amount, the amount that the antes and the blinds that are in the pot at the beginning of each hand. So, for example, if we are at the stage where we have um, blinds of 100, 200, and and antes of 25, and there's eight players at the table, so that's eight times 25 for the antes. There's a total pot of 500 chips, so 100 plus 200 in the blinds, plus the antes. Now, if your stack size is 5,000, then your X factor is 10. It's it's your stack size is 5,000 divided by the 500 that's in the pot. Pretty simple. If your stack size is 3,000, your X factor would be six, and so forth. So the key here is getting good at just doing this simple division. Sometimes it's easier to just take the size of pot to start of the hand and just multiply that out and see where you end up if you're not really good at division. So maybe that's easier for some people. The other thing you can do is just take your current stack size and then divide it by the size of the pot. Now when you're playing online, this is actually even easier because you can use the calc program. Just go to start menu, hit run, and type in C-A-L-C and it brings up the Windows calculator and from there you can just easily type in the size of your stack and the, the size of the pot and calculate your uh, your X factor and I'll actually do that as a demonstration at some points as we're playing in the game again these are estimates they're approximations it's a rule of thumb system it's not an exact science so you don't have to be exact just get you in the ballpark to get your X factor now I've created this X Factor playbook and what the X Factor playbook is is a way of giving you guidelines based on what your X is currently as to how you should be thinking about playing. So we have a really big X like greater than 30. I call this the chip monster or you're you know you're in a position to bully everybody at this point. You can take more risks, you can bluff and steal a lot more. You you can use your stack aggressively as long as you don't risk more than about 10x okay so as an example if I've got a uh, an X of 30 um, I'm not going to want to to spend all 30 of that going up another against another player who has a really big stack that would that would be foolish so when I want to engage I want to engage with players who have 10x or less okay in case they take me all in all right so that's, this is just, again, it's just some things to think about in terms of who you engage and how you play when you're in that chip monster position because you don't want to lose your chip lead. That could be really devastating. But you can take more risks as long as you're, you know, knowing that you're going up against players where you're not going to risk at all. Now, if you're in the, what I call easy street range, your X is greater than 20 but less than 30, you, you're still in a pretty good position to take some calculated risks, bluff and steal, and but use your stack selectively aggressively when you come in you're not going to limp in a lot you're not going to call a lot you're going to come in and you're going to raise you're going to push people around not quite as much as when you're the chip monster but you know you're not going to be limping around a whole lot unless you're trying to trap somebody in this case we don't want to risk more than about eight to ten times again we want we want to keep our X high and we don't want to take too many big risks 